I'm Gabriel Chavez, I belong to the International Socialist Organization and to the Movement for Peace in Colombia. The Movement for Peace in Colombia is an grassroots organization based here in New York that is trying to uh, promote the negotiated solution to the peace process in Colombia. Uh, as you may know already, there is currently talks in Havana uh, in, uh, between the guerrillas and the government in, 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 in trying to get a final solution to the conflict. Uh, the peace talks com are composed of three to of five topics. Uh, the first one is uh, the, um, has been already been solved, and it, it seemed to, it was one of the hardest ones to get solved. It was the uh, problem of land. Uh, so there has been, the, apparently there has been an agreement. There has been reached an agreement uh, for the for the uh, for the problem that has that is the root of the Colombian conflict. Um, the other topic, the other topics are the what to do with the victims of the conflict, with the victims that uh, these 60 years of war have uh, uh, done, uh, and in, 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 in with the regard with respect with things on the truth, the search for truth about what happens to their families and the reparation that uh, they should be uh, uh, have rights to. The third topic is the issue of narcotraffic, uh, which is most of what I'm going to discuss later, and why it's important that the American community gets involved in, the, in the, getting, getting the support of the American government and uh, backing down the results of, backing the, uh, the, results of the Havana, Havana. The fourth result is how to reach an, uh, Political, the, 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 the political opportunities that the FARC leaders will have after they demobilize and put down weapons. And the last uh, is how uh, is the final solution of the conflict and how to verify that the accords of Havana are going to be uh, sat, uh, followed, really followed. So, uh, regarding to the third topic, what uh, we pre presume the FARC is trying to, to obtain from the government are concessions on how to deal with eradications of, of crops. Um, the, the way the, crop, uh, the, the cultivation of coca uh, has, been, has been attacked uh, it has been by heavily militar militarized uh, means. Uh, fumigation, so the fumigation does not distinguish what is on the ground. Uh, it eradicates both the coca and the products, of the products that are uh, for edible consumption. So it has generated a lot of uh, anger from the communities that live from coca, and uh, and the, 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 um, well, they also burn burn burn, burn, uh, burn the, the plantations. Uh, but it has the, the reason why it's very difficult to convince the farmers not to produce coca is because uh, they cannot compete with any illegal products. Uh, it's very expensive to produce edible crops. Uh, and once you the, the farmers produce them, commercialize them is a big problem. They have to get the cost of transportation, they have to risk and get to the nearest town, uh, risking that they, they don't get sell, so sell in the market. While if they say grow coca, the only process they have to do is come transform the coca into pasta, into, into coca paste, yeah, and uh, the buyer will come for it. And the buyer nowadays is mostly farm. Um, FARC does the buying of the coca and then finds uh, who crystallizes it into the final product, the white crystals that are, co uh, are cocaine. So, um, what, what we presume they are trying to do, they are going to try to do is find an alternative means of eradication of coca products and we get the, uh, uh, for, the, for the eradication of the, of the drug problem. So now I, I am with that thing, uh, that's, that's what is being discussed in Havana. Uh, I want to discuss the beginning of the war and how the, 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 the role of the United States has been during this. The business of drugs started in Colombia in the 70s with what was called the uh, marijuana. It's the, a variety of marijuana without seeds, what's called the Santa Marta Gold, started in the 70s. And it, the, the, uh, it was the reason why one arrived to, to to Santa Marta was because it was being pushed from Mexico out of Mexico, and they found this region in which the conditions for for illegal crops were done. So the, the fact is, the 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 
Colombian society is very unequal society. The people, the, the, the central government uh, do, don't, has abandoned most of the communities on the rural sides. And Santa Marta had indigenous population, uh, but they, they were uh, completely ignored by the government for centuries. So they, uh, what, 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 when the, the production of marijuana arrived, it created social mobility that for people that were, uh, had been uh, not, 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 not seen that before, it was a miracle. Uh, the marijuana and the start of drug was producing the social mobility that the government was refusing to provide, that the, the elites were refusing to do. So they, uh, that's in the 70s, the big, the big cartels started, and, uh, but there was pressure from the United States into the Colombian government uh, to, to stop the flow, the, the flow of drugs from, uh, to, into the United States. The, mean, the biggest mean and the, the mean that has caused uh, most problems in Colombia was the, poli the policy of extradition of, 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 of drug, war, law, drug lords. And in, the, in 1979, there was, an, uh, there was built an agreement on, uh, on the, uh, that uh, signed by the Colombia and the US government to extradite people that committed crimes of narco traffic. It, didn't, it wasn't followed uh, until the assassination of, of, one of the Minister of Justice, Rodrigo Lara Bolivia. He was killed, and, and in a matter that this, this war that was, that, was, uh, that was held between the, uh, the cartels of Medellin and the Colombian government was held most in the uh, urban areas. And uh, they would assassinate people on the, on the street, they would put bombs, it was... Uh, and uh, after the assassination of Rodrigo Lara, the president at the moment, Belisario Betancourt, started to implement the, the Treaty of Extradition and took Carlos Leder to, 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 uh, to extradite Carlos Leder. And the penalties, the penalties were unbelievable. It was life in prison plus 150 years. Uh, and the isolation that they could predict, the, 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 the uh, drug warlords predicted they would have when they uh, arrived in the United States. Ha, uh, forced them to fight hard against the solution. They had the motto of, we prefer a tomb in Colombia than a jail cell in the United States. That was the motto. And the whole fight was to eliminate the extradition. Uh, in 1991, the Colombian, uh, 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 the Colombian had passed a process of, of, of progressive politics in which a new the opportunity of writing a new constitution was done. The, the, the Constitution of Colombia was written in 1991. In general, it was very progressive. It, it got together a lot of different sectors of society on the writing of the Constitution, and it forbid the extradition. It was a concession. It was a result of the of the, of the, the wars of the drug, uh, against the Medellin cartel that the, uh, that this was. Uh, put out of the Constitution. And it had this nationalistic overtone that what if the, 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 the United States decides to ask the extradition political leaders of social, pro, of social movements. Uh, so there was this uh, uh, reaction of the left of not trying to extradite people. Um, but so after the extradition was uh, forbidden by the Constitution, uh, Escobar uh, turned himself into the prison. He, got, he was put in prison for a while, and uh, but then he's, he kept uh, de, uh, he kept being the king of the of the Medellin cartel. He kept uh, doing the business of the cartel. The president Gaviria decided to m move it, move him to another cell, uh, another jail in Colombia where he could ha keep on the, keep him under control. Uh, Escobar escaped. The violence started again. It lasted for one year until he was uh, found. Uh, after he called his wife, the phone call was intercepted. Uh, they would look, found his location, and they got him in the roof of a, of a, of a, of a house in, in Medellin. So that's the first chapter of Colombian violence, and it was because of the policy of restoration. Then uh, the Medellin cartel uh, uh, well, stopped being uh, as important. The cartel that took more control was uh, the Cali cartel, which were not Per, they did decided not to uh, engage into open confrontation with the state. Now, 
the, uh, there is a distinction between the, there is a difference of behavior on the on the um, on the of the narco trafficking on the rural areas and on the on the urban areas. Well, the, this uh, this part was a direct confrontation with the state. In the rural areas, uh, the narco traffickers started to uh, engage in in, in in network with the the, the traditional owners of land, with the uh, big uh, the big land owners. So um, the and then started to incentivate the growth of paramilitary groups. Yeah. And huh? Yeah, and you see. Um, so the EUC had a, had a direct link with the, with the paramilitaries, uh, uh, with the, with the uh, narco trafficking on the second stage of the process. What happens is that once the guerrilla, uh, 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 in the latest days, the, uh, the latest part of, the, of this thing, once the guerrilla gets the pasta base, it sells the pasta base to the paramilitaries. The paramilitaries are the ones that produce, that crystallizes it and export and get it get this problem. But the paramilitaries are in the process of expansion and expelling people from their land for to, to, con to produce concentrations of land. Uh, so that's the two, the, the two roles that, they, um, that the drug has, uh, the two effects that the drug has had in Colombia. Um, well, the recently after, after the, uh, an attempt of peace talks between the Colombian government in 1999 and, uh, and between 1999 and 2002, there was this uh, uh, President Pastrana. He said, try to set, get an agreement between the, 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 between the FARC and the government. But the fact is no, none of the parties were really interested in, on, a, on a real negotiation. They were, both of the parties were engaged into arming themselves stronger. While um, while Pastrana was negotiating the origins of Plan Colombia here in the United States, the guerrillas were um, smuggling more drugs, uh, building better, better air, land, uh, air, airports for their products, and um, the whole thing collapsed in chaos. And, and uh, it was a big loss politically for the guerrillas. The, the, the Colombia, uh, the the country. The people of Colombia saw all the thing, they saw all this thing as a mockery of, the, of their own goodwill to negotiate. Uh, the result is that we have the most right-wing president in the country, in the in the hemisphere. When Pastrana came to the U.S., didn't someone plant like two pounds of heroin and cocaine in his plane, and that was uncovered, and that kind of made a mockery of the whole thing? And then Pastrana. Yeah. And, um, uh, no, Sanfer San San had another thing, but it's another problem with Sanfer. We can talk about it more in the discussion. I think you missed the first part. We can like do the whole. So, um, after that, there was a big reaction uh, of of the Colombian uh, population, and they should, uh, they wanted a full uh, front front uh, war against the against the guerrillas. Uribe was president during eight years. And by a rea for a reaction against the disgust that, 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 that the, the, the previous attempt of negotiations uh, produced. Um, and Uribe had a, a, a engaged in a, in a policy of zero tolerance with drugs. And internationally, he was, he was promoting, he was, it's, it, it's interesting what, what, what uh, this version of imperialism that occurred in Colombia during these eight years uh, was. It, this is, a unique form of imperialism is intervention by invitation. <laughs> Everything that the, 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 from, see, uh, starting from Pastrana, Pastrana asked them to intervene, but Uribe, every time uh, that that, they, uh, that there were situations on the table, Uribe offered more than the United States expected uh, uh, on the war on drugs. He offered them to build seven, to to give them space in seven military bases. Uh, to confront the uh, to confront the guerrillas, and uh, so uh, what what ended up happening in the meantime, from the on, on the, this period, what had uh, for the population of Colombia has has, has the most uh, it, it has been dramatic. The, the during these five years, the first five years of Colombia has produced 
uh, the biggest uh, uh, displacement, for displacement population of the world. Even and it's, it, it was second to Sudan, now it, 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 it's bigger. Uh, about 4.4 million people have been displaced of their land by, uh, by the, the threats uh, on a population that is 40 million people. So uh, one in 10 Colombians uh, were, were got one visit uh, to their town one day and they were threatened, you believe or it won't kill you, right? And the uh, characteristic of the paramilitaries were, were a full terror, they would take anyone from the population, they would chop their heads in front of the population and threat the rest of the, to, to leave. And they would play soccer with, with, with the heads of the people, they would compete. Once they decided to start the, uh, hiding the bodies, they would compete of how fast they could dismember them with motor chainsaws and put them in bags so that they sank and they were not found. And all this is known because they, when uh, Uribe promised to, once Uribe got in power, Uribe, uh, when he was, he was a governor of, uh, of Antioquia, he was a promoter of vigilante groups, at that moment called the Convivir, uh, which were uh, uh, arming themselves against the guerrilla. So it was, even if, if he's not connected directly, he, they are, they, they are a, a basis of support politically. They, they admit to have been recommending people in the rural areas to vote in favor of Uribe. Uh, so uh, Uribe got, uh, got, got uh, once in power, he pr created the demobilization of the paramilitary groups. And uh, uh, they started, one of the uh, points of the demobilization, one of the demand of the civil society was that they had to confess their crimes. And there was this case of, of uh, one of the one of these guys that one a, a commander of these paramilitary groups that was his name was well his la, a, alias was Atiati and he started confessing all these con these details that we that I described okay, were confessed by him on the media but as soon as he started talking not what he did not how he did it but but, but he started talking about why he did it and who ordered it. Uribe once in a night decided to extradite him. And once in the United States, the process, the judicial process that had started of finding more information about where the, what, what happened and who ordered these things were kept in silence. It, 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 kept, it was kept away from the judicial branch. Uh, so that's the second component of, the, of how the, law, the rules of extradition has affected negatively the justice, uh, the search for justice in Colombia. It has, it has prevented uh, the, the judicial branch to do their work. And so that's uh, one of the, uh, one of the uh, damaging aspects of the, of the, of the policy of, uh, of drug, uh, of against drugs from the Colombian, uh, by the United States. Okay. Um, other uh, other other uh, influences of the that co that the um, United States has affected the regulations in Colombia is the uh, how to deal with personal doses. Uh, the fa uh, right immediately after, uh, after the Constitution in 1994, some judges decided that it was illegal, it was unconstitutional to forbid people to use the personal dose of, of uh, narcotics. And uh, it was the, uh, there was pressure from the United States against against the personal doses, uh, and Uribe attempted twice uh, to to make the, the use of personal doses uh, illegal. In 2002, he attempted to do it by a referendum. Uh, it was put down because because of, of the uh, manners of formal manners on how the, 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 the referendum was employed. So it was it was declared illegal the referendum. And in 2007, he attempted and succeeded in making, in, in, in persecuting, in, in getting laws that allows him to persecute personal doses. Uh, it has only been applied um, for poor people in the urban areas uh, because the police do not want to mess with someone that could be the son of a senator. Right? So they, they use it, they use this, the persecution of, of, of personal use and just to as a, as a way of controlling, uh, of, of civil control. 
But last year, in 2012, uh, again, there was a sentence by the Cervantes that uh, says that it cannot be criminalized. And that's the last part of the thing. Do we have more time, or that's it? You have eight more minutes. OK. So <laughs> uh, I want to discuss also the how the, 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 the the way that the Uribe government engaged with the international community, trying to uh, promote a policy of zero tolerance, as as the world has uh, had slowly progressed towards the, the realization that there was need for, for for another change of policy, he kept pushing the. Uh, so he kept, he would say that uh, he would try to promote three links: one, the links between drugs and terrorism, saying that. Uh, Using drugs is as criminal as killing people directly in the, in the jungles of Colombia. If you use drugs, because that uh, and what and one of, uh, what what needs to be addressed here is that the it is not the drugs that produce produce the, the, the violence. It is the fact that the, con the a contract that is not protected by a state the, by the state by the laws of the state. The only way to get enforced is by the rule of violence, right? So people that engage into, into contracts of selling and, and, and buying drugs in order to, to not get stolen, since the state is not going to protect them, they need to militarize themselves. And uh, so the, the, the reason why the drugs produce these wars is because they are illegal. And uh, he, he uh, Uribe also kept, kept saying that the, the, it was the drugs that produced the environmental degradation because as they go, the farmers go into into more natural areas to expand and get more 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 territory to produce illegal drugs. They damage the environment. But it, the guy was flooding the the, the, the Macarena with, with with glyphosate. A glyphosate is something and, and a strange mix of this glyphosate is what they use here is called Roundup. Roundup, what Monsanto produces. Roundup uh, ready. Yeah, they, uh, Randall Brady. Now they have, they, uh, they have uh, it was Randall Ultra for the eradication of illegal drugs. Uh, they, it has a special component that is, that is it sticks better, stronger to the, to the plants. And in Colombia, the type, the, this special component is multiplied by four the recommendations of Monsanto. So, uh, even Monsanto has scruples at this point. Uh, so, uh, so the uh, and, and, and and he he without a, without uh, getting his red fa re face red he would claim that it was the, the drugs that were uh, uh, attacking the environment. So now um, the last point that we would say uh, is that uh, there is there uh, there was a link between drugs and human rights violations that the drugs produced were strong victimizers of. of uh, of this society, while he was at the same time promoting the idea that the, uh, that the, 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 the drugs dealers were terrorists, right? So uh, he was uh, uh, attaching the, 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 the thing with the drugs and terrorists, and you don't negotiate with terrorists. So he was promoting, engaging in a language that was uh, that allowed the, go the, the, the army to engage into human rights violations and and the human rights violations that were committed during his, during his government, which a lot more, a lot bigger than any other government before him. So that's uh, that's uh, his 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 his, um, uh, his speech, his rhetoric, his, the way he argued in the international community. Now the results of Plan Colombia, they said. Uh, uh, regarding the uh, eradication of drugs, it has not pro the, the amount of cocaine production is the same as when it's constant. The quality is higher, the price is cheaper. So, it, uh, uh, in regarding coca, is a failure. Then they go to the part to say that the, the Plan Colombia has achieved security, right? Well, yes, it has. It has reduced the number of kidnappings. Uh, now people can go to one side of the countryside to the other side of the countryside, um, followed in a ca in a caravan of helicopters uh, mm -hmm. from one city to another, uh, and so pe people have felt more secure. But the who, who is more secure? And it's an analysis that uh, and the, uh, has been done by uh, uh, 
Claudia Lopez in Colombia, a good journalist, he, she says, she explains that the security is the, Colombia is more secure for a certain cl cl class of people, for the investors class, right? For the population, it's not more secure for the peasants that lost their land. They are trying to recover it now, and at the moment, now they are armies, so there is a policy of returning land to the peasants, and now there is already an army against the restitution of land. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the situation. So when, when the success of Plan Colombia is measured basically on the security that the investors class can go do investment and not get kidnapped. Thank you.